Hello, in this video we're going to go over this Diophantine equation. Find all integers a and b such that a cubed is equal to 6b squared plus 2. When I looked at this problem, I thought of two different things. The first one was subtracting 8 from both sides, and the benefit of that would be to get a difference of cubes on this side, and then we can factor a 6 on the other side. And the other one was look at the parity. So I'm going to tell you both methods, but I'll get you to a solution using only one of the methods, because fundamentally the approaches are quite similar. So first I subtracted 8 from both sides. So that gives me a cubed minus 8 on one side and then 6b squared minus 6 on the other side. So the left side can be factored a minus 2, a squared plus 2a plus 4. And the right side can be factored as 6 times b minus 1 times b plus 1. And then I argued using parity of a and b and I got to a solution. The second method was, looking at the right side, I noticed that a cubed must be even, which means a must be even. So a is equal to 2 times c for some integer c. Then I took that and plug it back into the equation, so that gives me 2c cubed is equal to 6b squared plus 2. So cubing that, we get 8c cubed is equal to 6b squared plus 2. That gives me 4c cubed equals 3b squared plus 1. Now I had basically two choices. Either argue with parity of a, uh, b and c or argue using uh, mod 3. If you take that mod 3 by Fermat's little theorem, I know that c cubed is the same as c. So that becomes c. 4 is 1 and the other side becomes 1. And then I take that and plug it in. It didn't give me a whole lot about b and c. So the next thing that I did was I take it mod 2. So mod 2 we know that 3b squared plus 1 is even. So that tells me b is odd. So I can write down b as 2 times d plus 1 for some integer d. Then I take that and plug it back into the equality that I have. So I have 4c cubed equals 3 times 2d plus 1 squared plus 1. And that gives me 3 times 4d squared plus 4d plus 1 plus 1. And that gives me 12d squared plus 12d plus 4. We're going to divide both sides by 4. We get c cubed is equal to 3d squared plus 3d plus 1. Okay. So this is really suspicious to me. When I looked at this one, this reminded me of a perfect cube. So this is almost like d plus 1 cubed. But I have to subtract d cubed from that. So that's really interesting because that gives me c cubed plus d cubed is equal to d plus 1 cubed. So that's really nice. Because by Fermat's last theorem, I know if I have x to the power of n plus y to the power of n is equal to z to the power of n, and n is at least 3, and x and y and z are integers, from here I can deduce that x is 0, or y is 0, or z is 0. So from here, I can deduce that either c is 0, or d is 0, or d plus 1 is 0. So let's see what we get. If c is 0, that gives me d cubed is equal to d plus 1 cubed. That's, of course, not going to make any sense because that gives me d equals d plus 1, which doesn't work. If d is 0, then that means d plus 1 is 1, which means c cubed is equal to 1, which means c is 1. Now, c is 1, a was 2c, so a becomes 2, and b was 2d plus 1, so b is 1. So that's one solution to the original equation. If d plus 1 is 0, that means d is negative 1, so we get c cubed minus 1 is equal to 0, which means c is again 1. So that gives me a equals 2, but b is going to be 2d plus 1, which is negative 1. 
So this gives me B equals negative one. So that means we get two solutions, A equals two and B equals plus or minus one. So these are the two solutions. Now, after I solved the problem, I looked at the official solution. They have done something similar, but there's a little bit of a shortcut for that. So if you look at the original equation, A cubed equals six B squared plus two, there's a way to actually see the sum of cubes from the beginning, which I did not see at the beginning. If you look at B plus one cubed, that is B cubed, plus 3b squared plus 3b plus 1. If you look at 1 minus b cubed, that is 1 minus 3b plus 3b squared and then minus b cubed. If you add these two, you get exactly 2 to so b plus 1 cubed plus 1 minus b cubed is going to be 2 and then we get 6b squared. The b cubes cancel. We have a plus b cubed minus b cubed and we have a 3b and negative 3b. Those two cancel. So what that means is that we get a cubed equals 1 plus b cubed plus 1 minus b cubed. Which the Fermat's last theorem tells us either a is 0 or b is 1 or b is negative 1. And for each one of them, we'll be able to get to a solution. This one doesn't give us a solution because that means 1 plus b cubed is equal to negative 1 minus b cubed, which would mean 1 plus b is equal to negative 1 plus b. That's not possible. If b is 1, we will get a cubed equals 8 which would mean a is 2. And if b is negative 1, when you plug in negative 1 into the equation, we again get a cubed equals 8, which would mean a is 2. So we get the exact same solutions. a equals 2 and b equals plus or minus 1. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I will see you in the next video.